Welcome to Friday's Fireside Chat. This is the third week that we've had Fireside Chats here at Journey Christian Church. My name is Jim Rogers and I'm a member and an elder here at The Journey. I'm also a musician and just last week on Easter Sunday, I played songs of worship from the rooftop of our church. It was a bit cold yet very warm, but a great day for all. I also enjoy teaching and participating in classes here at Journey. Most importantly, I'm thankful to our Savior Jesus for saving me from myself some 40 years ago. To God be the glory. I've been listening to the earlier fireside chats and I encourage you to do the same on our Facebook page. These chats are a new creative means of keeping in touch within our church family. They're all very good. Today's chat, so much to say and so little time. I'd like to share about creative imagination, first through a personal story, and secondly, through the experience of C.S. Lewis and his brother Warren Lewis when they were kids. Now, when I was just a kid, maybe 10 years old, my brother and I found a lump of clay in a field. What we were doing in the field, I don't know. But we found this lump of clay and brought it home. My mother, probably 40 years old at the time, and with all six kids in school, she had some extra time on her hands, or rather, she found extra time with her hands. She discovered that she had a gift of creativity in sculpting, previously unbeknownst to her. Here's one of her sculptures, one of many that she made. Through her lifetime from the age of 40 until she passed away at 92, uh, she, she made many sculptures of all different kinds, some very modern and some more classic as this one might be. She became known for her sculptures and it's a part of her legacy, who she was. I'm thankful that I can honor her today with you. I wonder what creative gifts that you might have, yet unknown. To be creative and curious and an original thinker, that's what humans were created to be by the God who loves us. As this pandemic outbreak continues to unfold, it make it harder and harder to focus on anything besides the pandemic. Nevertheless, we should resist the temptation to let it dominate our lives. I've seen lots of fear and anxiety about the unknown, as Dave Hall talked about in his fireside chat, and many have expressed a desire to go back to normal. What else can we do? Let me tell you about C.S. Lewis and his older brother, Warren Lewis. C.S. Lewis, as you may know, was a famous English author of Christian literature in the 20th century. He was no stranger to fears brought on by pandemics and wars. When he was just a kid growing up in Northern Ireland, more than a million people each year in Europe died from tuberculosis making it one of the most feared diseases in the world. In Ireland itself, more than 11,000 people each year died from TB, many of them young people. In fact, among youth and young adults, it was the most common cause of death. Today, there are still over 1 million tuberculosis deaths worldwide every year. Years later, Lewis's brother Warren still recalled the fear that permeated every home in Belfast. Then as now, isolation functioned as the chief strategy for protection. The Lewis brothers were quarantined inside their home whenever it rained, which given the weather of Ireland, it seemed endless. Rain was thought to be a risk factor for transmission back then. 
Warren remembers, and he says, we spent an extraordinary amount of our time shut up indoors. We would gaze out of our nursery window at the slanting rain and the gray skies. And there, beyond a mile or so of sodden meadow, we would see the dim high line of the hills. Our world's limit, a distant land, strange and unattainable. Although difficult for two active children to tolerate, the confinement was not wasted. Indeed, according to Warren, it bequeathed a long-term legacy. He says, this recurring imprisonment gave us occasion and stimulus to develop the habit of creative imagination. We learned to draw. My brother made his first attempts at writing. Together, we devised the imaginary country of Boxen, which proliferated hugely and became our solace and joy for many years to come. And so, in circumstances that might have been merely dull and depressing, my brother's gifts began to develop in that childhood staring out at unattainable hills. C.S. Lewis went on to write about an imaginary country in the children's stories you know as the Narnia Chronicles. And he's written spiritual books like Mere Christianity and the Screwtape Letters and even a science fiction trilogy in the coming days, you and your loved ones may struggle with fear and anxiety and worry. You may also find yourselves with more time on your hands than you know what to do with. My suggestions, make the most of the opportunity. Learn a new skill, read good books, watch inspiring films. Reconnect with your family and friends by having discussions about things that matter. What have I done? I built a motorcycle. Let me show it to you. Here's my sculpture out of Legos, a thousand pieces. I made this a couple weeks ago and I enjoyed every bit of it. It's a Harley. <laughs> That's my sculpture. I made a meal. I'm usually not a meal maker in our household. I can, I can cook a frozen pizza and make a, a cup of coffee, but I made a meal all by myself. Easy for some, but not for me. Chicken tikka masala, a curry dish. And it was good. 10 or 12 herbs and spices, some of them I've never heard of. What an adventure. My friends and family are using Zoom for online communication, and many of you are as well. Using Zoom, my family, we exercise together with our kids, and with our in-laws and just finished today one month of the popular exercise video called insanity it was insane it was hard our church has also had to drive in worship as i mentioned that's creative imagination and making the best of the opportunities that we have freezing temperatures and a glorious gathering of cars and honking horns, we gathered. Our society will change. Remember the wise admonition of C.S. Lewis. If men had postponed the search for knowledge and beauty until they were secure, the search would never have begun. Let me finish with scripture from 1 Peter chapter four. God has given gifts 
to each of you from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Manage them well so that God's generosity can flow through you. Are you called to be a speaker? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Are you called to help others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then God will be given glory in everything through Jesus Christ. All glory and power belong to him forever and ever. Thank you for your time today. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.